Hi, it's Kernatex here with a re-recording of the Cross Linux from scratch running on a 486. And the reason why I've done this is just because the recording I did originally was a little bit unclear. Um, and hopefully this one will be a little bit clearer, a little bit more legible. So I've got a um, grub prompt here because I booted from a floppy disk with uh, legacy grub on it. Because um, I didn't install grub on the machine that cross Linux from scratch is on because um, I have other stuff on there that I don't want to um, modify at all. So first of all I'm going to specify the disk and partition where the um, kernel is and then I'm going to load the kernel. Now the um, you can see there on the second line that the cross Linux from scratch kernel is there. I did try and boot from that. Originally it wouldn't work because it was on a partition that was inaccessible by Grub. Um, obviously it's an old machine um, and there's things like the cylinder limit and also uh, this is because this is legacy Grub it may not have understood the newer formatting of the ext. Uh, ext2, 3 and 4 file systems so it, it couldn't read it but I've copied it onto a partition I think yeah it's a fat partition it says there um, but when I tried to boot from it it actually has been compiled for Pentium now the kernel had been um, set as a 486 kernel so somehow when it was compiled on the cross compile it's failed which is a bit unfortunate so it's got around the mechanisms that we use to try and fool the system um, that it was running on uh, a, a different type of uh, architecture. Now whether that's because cross Linux from scratch is a bit out of date or whether it's because the Linux kernel or the GCC compiler has got a little bit cleverer um, as to ascertaining what, what architecture it's running on I don't know but um, it compiled it incorrectly unfortunately although it is strange that it compiled it for a Pentium and not um, an i686 or a Core 2 or any, anything else so a little bit strange maybe the code for identifying the processor is um, a little bit broken but it's not a problem because um, as in my pre previous video I'll just use another kernel that I've got here which is perfectly adequate so I've specified that, I'll just specify some boot parameters to tell um, this kernel, uh, this Linux system which uh, device to boot from as the root device. So just wait for that kernel to load and I should be able to boot into it. So there it is booting. So if you remember before there were a few errors, I haven't touched the system at all so the errors should be the same as they were before, as though there's something that would need to be ironed out if um, you were to use this um, as a basis for uh, another system. So you see there's, a, there's one failure there, something wrong in the, the um, file systems table um, and also when I log in, if you remember from the previous videos, some bash errors that occur, there they go, uh, but that's not a problem. So let's start by looking at the kernel details. So there you go, do you name minus n for the name. Oops. Ah. Uh, if I can type properly. And let's check the version of GCC to show that it's the one that we compiled. Okay, and we can also do things like um, check the GCC version. So it's. Um, Libstrap 
As you can see there's the GCC version we compiled. We can do something like AR version, see the bin utils, the one the version again that we compiled. Now in my original video I tried to run Python um, because the later versions of LFS, the ordinary straightforward of LFS, um, Python's part of the basic base system and it's, it's not anymore. Uh, sorry, it, it wasn't at the time this CLF was um, created, so it's not there anymore. Also, I tried to run Perl and there was a problem with Perl. Uh, see, it says not found, but when you type where is Perl, it seems to know about it. So, um, again, there's some issues there that need to be resolved. So it's pointing to Perl in the tools directory and obviously that doesn't exist anymore. So, um, yeah, this is not, not a, a, a killer at the moment because obviously we've got the system working, but obviously if you wanted to use the system, something serious and these things are going to have to be um, dealt with. So we can also look at some other tools that we installed. Um, Orc, for example. Um, so that's that one. Sed was another one I looked at. And you can see the stuff on the root there as well. We'll probably do some like ETC CLFS release. So you can see that was from a, a development version of um, CLFS. And you can also look at the CPU type, see what the kernel knows about the CPU. And there you can see it's a 486 DX4. So that's about it. Um, thank you for watching. If you've liked the video, please click the thumbs up. And if you've not already done so, um, click subscribe button to hear about any future videos similar to this that I um, produce. Thank you very much. Goodbye.